in five, four, three, two. Well, I thought I had a cool life. Coming up next on the Jeff Krillin Show, a man who is living lifestyles of the rich and famous. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. I remember when I was a reporter at Fox 4, anytime the lottery would get up super high, I would go to a jeweler in, in the Park Cities or maybe the Rolls Royce dealer and talk about what you could afford if you won the Mega Millions jackpot. My guest today uh, is kind of living that dream. It's Joe Pacetti. He is the CEO and founder of uh, Jay Pacetti Precious Jewels. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Good to see you. Well, I am so impressed. We're going we're gonna to get more into the the life you currently live in a second but you said this started out you started out as a shoe shine boy yeah I've kind of had an interesting journey I grew up in Tulsa Oklahoma I was adopted from an unwed mother's home and adopted by a, a beautiful couple and uh, we had no uh, great material wealth but we had everything you could want as far as all the love in the world and uh, I feel they were the foundation that put me where I'm able to be today uh, my first job, I was a shoeshine boy at 13. I had tips. Once a month, I would take the city bus after school, go downtown, and buy a little initial ring for $7 with my J on it, or I would uh, buy a little gold filled topaz birthstone ring or a St. Christopher. And I did that until I graduated to be a waiter when I was 16. I found this Omega gold and diamond watch. I wasn't going to be able to live until I bought that watch until I found out it was $850. We're talking about 1972. And I like was ready to cry that I didn't have the money, and the lady said, you can put it in layaway. I said, what is layaway? Well, what you can do is give me a down payment, and we'll keep it here, no interest, and you can pay it out. She got my $250 that was burning a hole in my pocket. Five months, I gave her the rest of the money, came home, showed my parents the watch I bought, and then I got a berating on how could I waste my money on something like that. Their car only cost $1,200. How could I spend $850? I said, very easy. It's real gold and diamonds. In your car, you have to put gas and oil and water, and you have to insure it, and it depreciates, has maintenance. My dad kind of looked, and he said, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right about all that. Anyway, it, it kind of escalated from there until a girl that I dated's mother said, you need to go to work selling jewelry. You're majoring in marketing, you need to sell jewelry. You need to get a gemology degree. So I drove from Tulsa down here and I met with a man named Leo Fields, still alive. I think he was senior or executive vice president of sales. And uh, he hired me to run a store in Tulsa. And I worked there for two years until I made the record sale for them, which was $43,000. Our average sale was $850, we are talking 1979. And they didn't want to compensate me. And so I left with no money, went on my own, and called a few little companies and said, will you send me a couple things on consignment and I'll pay you when I sell them. And um, that's kind of how it started. Well, how did you, I mean, you've, you've really become a legend in the industry. How did you go from, from that, those humble beginnings to where you are today? Luck, maybe. Uh, maybe God sending me enough business that I could... Uh, to keep it all going. Um, I've always been taught from uh, early age of five years old and we got allowance to give back. And I, I think when you give back, you're blessed. And uh, to this day, I tithe to my church, Cathedral of Hope. But uh, it, it's always been a word of mouth business, Jeff. Everyone will come and they like what they bought or they see it's something unusual they don't see in a retail store. They like the privacy of it. We're very affordably priced. 
um, its value for dollar, and um, one happy person tells the next. And from that, I've been able to travel all over the world. I have nine million miles on American Airlines, and kind of taken the little doctor bag and go make women feel great and make the husbands hate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a couple of beautiful models here in a second, but we're going to start with a clip on CNBC. Let's go ahead and roll that now. I'm in from Dallas and I brought an important pair of diamond earrings to deliver to a client. Jeweler Joe Pacetti, aka Diamond Joe, is in New York City to deliver some hefty ear bling to a Park Avenue billionaire. They're about two and a half million dollars retail. Before he makes the big delivery, Joe makes a pit stop at the Baccarat Hotel. And when you see what's stashed in his Birkin bag, you'll understand why he travels with a bodyguard. Inside the Lux Hotel's super secure $20,000 per night VIP suite, the Iceman unveils his pricey stash, which he'll be showing to clients in the city, flanked by that guard who's packing heat. This is a bracelet made in the 1920s. These feature 18 karat each, yellow diamonds in the bottom. How about a 57 karat yellow diamond ring, Texas size as we say. Joe also brought an emerald ring worth over 1.2 mil and a 116 karat diamond necklace valued at more than 1.7 million. That's more than 10 million bucks in one bag. Not to mention the over-the-top ice he's wearing. I call that my everyday bracelet. It's made out of platinum, 66 carats of diamonds. It's totally flexible. Most expensive piece I have on is the chain. It's about a million eight. For me, it's a wearable form of art. Well, in case you're wondering, he's a he's a big fan of the Second Amendment, so don't mess with Joe. <laughs> We've got some beautiful. Yes, yes, he's he's armed and dangerous. Yes, sir. Um, we're going to start with Amber. Amber, come on over here and kneel between us. And and Joe, why don't you narrate for us? Look at beautiful we? Amber. Yes. So These are a pair of estate earrings, and they feature 19 karat each matched champagne diamonds. Aren't they beautiful? They're just on little <laughs> platinum wires. <laughs> And then we have Arnold. Arnold, why don't you come over and show us uh, what you've got. This is my husband, Arnold, who's a robotics engineer, but he's kind of fallen in love with jewelry, as, as you can see. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, my goodness. These are called diamond briolettes. If you can see them, they're faceted all the way around like a chandelier prism. And that's got about 35 carats in it. And then this is called Tutti Frutti. So you have all the colors, sapphire, ruby, uh -huh. emerald and they're interspersed with diamond beads also in between and platinum. We've sold a lot of things like this that people wear because it's uh, you know something someone put on and wear and people really don't know what the value of it is. And we are coming up on the holiday shopping season. So. <laughs> it's holidays. <laughs> Thank goodness. We also want to show off some pictures. Uh, we're going to start with a cake, and I want you to tell us the oh, back wow. story. So uh, uh, tell th us about this. This was a lot of fun to do, Jeff. Um, this was done... Um, with the Little Nell Hotel and uh, their food and beverage director, Chubby, and I got together and I had uh, their chef, pastry chef, make the cake. Uh, it's a beautiful Valrona chocolate cake. And then I partnered up with one of my diamond suppliers and has $83 million worth of jewelry on the cake. Oh, my goodness. We had, a, we had uh, two guards. I think the insurance that night was $8,000 for the cake. Oh my I had goodness. 20 of my big clients for dinner that night. We rented the whole dining room. And we were trying to beat the Guinness Book of uh, World Records on the most expensive cake. Then Guinness kind of changed it and said the cake had to be edible, and the cake had to have been sold, and this and that. Anyway, we didn't win it because they changed a bit of the rules, but we did have an awful lot of fun doing it. And I did sell a beautiful diamond chain off the top of it that <laughs> night. That is one rich cake. It um, was. Okay, and now we have a picture. Uh, this is from the uh, Real Housewives of oh, Dallas. Yes. And whose finger are we looking at? That's Leanne Locken. Oh, wow. We beautiful. love her. Beautiful. Well, and I know you were, I watched that episode. You were You were featured in that episode. That's That was really cool. She, um... She loves emeralds, and that was her grandmother's favorite stone of it she was very close to. So we lent her a beautiful emerald and diamond tiara that's set like way up here, and a very beautiful emerald and diamond bracelet and big emerald and diamond earrings. And I think Arnold was around $4 million worth of jewelry, something like that. Wow. Oh, yeah. Four and a half million, something like that. She was like, 
she came down the aisle and everyone was like, I remember. <laughs> she was so beautiful and then she was so like over the top. I remember. No, man, that was amazing. And then one final picture. I can't wait to hear this story. Uh, he's wonderful. So in 1994, Lupe Murkison, who is deceased, was a huge Catholic here in Dallas and a client of mine said, you love the arts and you're well connected around the world. I'm going to put your name up to go on a board in the Vatican Museum in Rome. And I've been on that board since 1994. I'm the second longest reigning board member. And we raise funds to restore the treasures in the museum. The Vatican Museum has 454,000 works of art. It's totally privately funded. has nothing to do with the church. And um, I brought them some wonderful foundations like the George Brown Foundation from Houston and many other projects that we've gone together as a group, as a chapter. And um, and raise the money, and then I funded you know things of my own, and it's it's a great group. And I'm not a Catholic, but I so believe in this man. He's just incredible. Wow. Well, I know you've you've met a lot of uh, famous people. Were you nervous that day? The first one I met was John Paul, and he was already old and already getting kind of weak, but the charisma that that man had, that when he walked into the room, you could feel it. You could feel it. He was amazing. Um, I think that the Catholic Church needed this Pope many years ago, and they wouldn't have lost so many followers, and there would have been a lot of things maybe different than they, you know, were. Um, I only wish he could live a lot longer. He's, yes. he's a very, very down-to-earth he will not let you genuflect. He will not let you kiss a ring. Doesn't even wear a ring. I mean, wow. he's he's just really he's the pope's the people's pope. I love that. Well, you've you've lived such a blessed life. What advice do you have uh, for people watching this right now? I mean, uh, is uh, I mean, you have a very glamorous life, and we're in a recession right now. In Dallas, a recession might be different than it is in other parts of the country. But what advice do you have for people who, you know, are maybe they uh, just need a little inspiration because you came from nothing? Um, one thing I've never confused myself with my clients. I wait on them. I am basically a servant to them. Sometimes a 24-hour servant. Uh, I've never lost focus of where I came from. When I go back to Tulsa, my hometown, I drive by the house I grew up on East 3rd Street, which I sold for $52,000 four years ago when my 98-year-old mother died. And I've never lost, lost that, Jeff. And I also know that all of us are equal. It has nothing to do with how much money we have or how intelligent we are or who we know. But we're all equal, and uh, I'm not intimidated to wait on uh, many of the billionaires that we have because they're just people. They are just people, aren't they? Everyone is just people. I think, unfortunately, people get taken up by what someone has or who they are or who they know. And really, when it comes down to the end of our life, St. Peter doesn't care, mm -hmm. and it's not going to matter at all. Absolutely. And I, I think what people just have to realize: be grateful for what you have and give back. If you don't have money to give back, you can give your time, your knowledge, you can give your experiences, your connections, but always give back. Because to me, the real gift of when we really receive is when we give. Yes. You get more when you when you give, you receive more back. Joe, we're almost out of time. You have something in, oh, wow. in the, yes, you got it. These you, are quite you, special, you, Jeff. Yeah. This is uh, a man named Jar. Oh, wow, yeah. It's, it's an American example. living in Paris. Oh, my goodness. And uh, they're quite... A, Exceptional. It's a pair of rose gold cuffs Beautiful. with diamonds. And he made two sets, one in white and one in rose gold. And uh, a client has kind of uh, changed her lifestyle, and uh, her husband said, sell those and get something else. And so we're selling them for. Wow. You do have such a cool life. And thank you for uh, all the gems that you gave us today. I mean, this was this was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for a having me. Amber, you can't keep those. <laughs> you know it's Christmas coming up. I mean, she does have you. Maybe Victoria would like this. That's I can right. see these on your wife. I hope Victoria is not watching. <laughs> all right, we're going to end with your website. Uh, jpachetti.com is the website. Uh, please get a hold of him for all your holiday shopping needs. Joe, you've thank been you, amazing. Thank so you so much. Thank you so much. You bet. And that's Thank it you. for now. We'll see you next time.